All right, so in the last video, we got our Elasticsearch deployed to our project. So we got this first part in this list here kind of checked off. Now we need to set up our Elasticsearch index. And in order to do that, we need to connect to it. That's kind of the first step. So if, that, if you're a little unsure about what exactly Elasticsearch is, uh, here I have my test application selected, my for sale test application. Um, I, do, I didn't want to show the password to the real one. I'll just I'll show you the password to this one. Uh, but basically it's just a server so I can click this link and it takes me to the server you'll be prompted to uh, with a box that'll ask you to log in with credentials but I've already logged in all you need to do is put user for the username and then type whatever password you have right here to actually log in and then that will uh, give this browser so it gets saved in the browser basically um, and you can log into it but this doesn't really tell you much it just kind of shows you some properties which is pretty much worthless we don't care about that we need to actually be able to create an index and uh, specify the data format basically. So to head to the, the Elasticsearch documentation, I literally just Googled Elasticsearch documentation and the official documentation is right here. So elastic.co slash guide. So you can click this and this is the actual official documentation for Elasticsearch. So what we're going to be doing, using, so what we're going to be using to communicate with our Elasticsearch server is the Google Chrome extension called Postman. If you don't have Postman, uh, basically all it is is a way to send different HTTP requests. So I can send gets, post, puts, patch, all these different uh, request types to endpoints. Uh, you can attach headers, authorization types, bodies, basically to send data or retrieve data or do things like that without actually having to use a server. So this is what we're going to use to create the index and then also to test and make sure that it's able to retrieve the data properly. So to get uh, Postman, it's free. You can just go to uh, Google Chrome apps over here and you can see I have it installed if you don't have it installed go to the web store and just type postman and it's this guy right here that's the one you I think that's the one maybe it's all one word yeah this one right here that's the one I have postman so add that install it that will allow you to uh, use this right here and this is what we're going to use to create our index okay so the first step is creating an index creating specifying a structure of what you want it to look like so if we're at the documentation I want to make this as real as possible for you guys so you can do this yourselves so I uh, you know, I'm just gonna like search create uh, mapping or even create indexes is, is probably better create index and let's see so we want to create a mapping and to create an index API allows to provide a set of one or more mappings cool so let's click that and here you have some some demos. So this is essentially what we want to do. We want to create a node kind of in the index. Name it this in this case naming they're naming it test. Ours is going to be called post because we're uh, storing posts. So uh, we'll, we're going to be whoops, calling it post. And then we want to specify a number of shards. Then we specify the mappings. And then here's where all the types would go. So this this type one would actually be the object which in our case would be a post so we would put post here and then we specify all the different properties so the different properties in our case is going to be like city contact email country description and so on so um, that's just kind of an overview of what we're going to do now let's actually do it so let's open up postman and we're going to create a new post request because that's the uh, what we're going to be creating and the endpoint where we're sending the request is um, from our server so I can copy I'm just going to open this copy that and go back to postman type that in and what you need to do to create a new index is since I'm going to be calling it posts I would just set the endpoint to posts so we're connecting to our Elasticsearch server and we're creating a new index and naming it posts but I just realized that's the wrong server. That's the one for my test application. So I'm gonna go over to the real application. I'm gonna hide the password here so you can't see it because uh, I don't want you to connect to my server, but you do the same thing, you connect to this. Oh yeah, ask for authorization. You don't have to fill this out because we're not actually connecting to it through the browser. So you just hit cancel. I'm just interested in this link. So I'm copying that and I'm going back to Postman and I'm going to replace that and there we go so that's the endpoint for where our node our new node is going to be now the next part is uh, we can specify the data structure so let's go to the body section here and click on raw and we're just going to type in what the the, the data is going to look like so it's going to be similar to what you saw here but it'll just be a little different so we can start with a, a squiggly squiggly bracket 
and then tab in and the first thing we're going to do is type mappings and then close the quotation marks oh I'm actually gonna select JSON here so it actually highlights things there we go that looks a little better and uh, so then we do another squiggly and go inside mappings and inside of mappings our object is gonna be post we're creating a post object and then we need to assign some properties for that post object so properties oops and then we need to do another squiggly there we go and so if we compare this to what the example showed so here um, it's a little different because for one thing I'm not defining the number of shards and also um, I don't have to put this put because that's being done by postman so essentially when I whoops I meant to change that to put essentially when I put put here and I put posts here that's what that's that's accomplishing this first portion here so all um, by default it will automatically set the number of shards to one so I also don't need to put in this part so I'm skipping right to the mappings which is the mapping of the actual data itself so if you were confused hopefully that cleared things up there so now let's uh, add these properties in so the first property I'm going to add is city and then we this is a keyword type is a keyword so city is going to be the property name and then we need to define a type and the type of this is going to be text so all of our properties are going to be text because if you look in the firebase console every single one of these is a string so that's why I'm defining them all as text and so that's it that would be the first property and then we basically just repeat that process over and over again and user ID and then we can get rid of that last comma so that should be it Nope, I forgot country. Add country. Okay, so that should be good. Uh, that should be all of our properties. There should be a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of them total. Just gonna check the console. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have ten here, so I'm missing one. Uh, oh, we don't have price. Uh, so I'm not saving the price parameter in here because the price is going to be filtered on the client side. So we don't actually add price to the index. So that's it. That's what our data structure is going to look like in Elasticsearch. Um, so now the next part of this is we need proper auth authorization to send data to the server because it doesn't make sense if anybody could just send data to our server, right? So we have to add proper authorization. And to do that, we just type authorization here. Uh, so I have the header section selected here and then I add it uh, authorization token here and you're probably wondering okay so what is my authorization token so once again I would refer to the um, the documentation so here is the page that defines how you would communicate with HTTP clients uh, using Elasticsearch so as you can see here it defines what needs to be added to the header you have authorization which we have and then you need to put this keyword basic and then the token and then so how do you get the token it says right here the token is computed as the base 64 of username colon password so that's the username and the, the password to your Elasticsearch server which in our case uh, was shown right here I'm not showing my password but it's there so then how do you convert it to base 64 you're probably wondering so all you need to do is Google uh, base 64 encoder uh, click on encode here and then what we would do is just type user and then paste in your token whatever it is I'm just going to copy mine and once again I'm going to be blanking this out so you can't see it but all it is is user colon to my password then I'm going to hit encode and then my uh, encoded password pops out down here so I'm not going to show the whole thing but I'm just going to copy that now and go to uh, back to postman and then we just type in basic and then I paste in my uh, credentials and that's it so now I will be able to send requests to my server all right so let's try it let's try and create this index and see what postman says so I'm just gonna press uh, send up here you can see it's loading and we're waiting for the request and there we go it says acknowledged shards acknowledged index post so this is basically a positive response um, a negative response let me change the header uh, I'll just change my password so that it's wrong and then hit send again and this is what a negative response will look like so let's change that back and there we go so now we have an index that's actually created uh, so that's now if we if we took a look at our um, our PowerPoint so now now this kind of second part is completed we've added Elasticsearch to our project and now we've set up the Elasticsearch index the next part is moving the data from Firebase to our Elasticsearch index 
so that we can actually have some data to search. So that's what we'll do in the next video.